Thank you. I've always wanted to say that in front of a large crowd. And uh, now, let me turn the table. What if you are in the Miss Universe pageant? And I'm about to ask you your final question. And your final question is, what for you is the essence of being a queen? Let that sink in. So I'm going to allow you to reflect on that, and hopefully you can create your own answer by the end of this talk. We Filipinos are well known to be one of the world's biggest and most passionate pageant fans. In fact, whenever we hear the word Philippines during the Miss Universe pageant, a slew of online reaction videos will definitely pop up everywhere in social media. We are so passionate about beauty pageants that we even name our runway walks or pasarelas. I'm sure everybody in this room heard the terms tsunami walk and lava walk. So have you ever wondered, why are we so into beauty pageants? To further understand this cultural phenomenon, let's uh, look back at the history of Philippine pageants. The very first Filipina recorded beauty queen is Pura Villanueva. She was crowned as the Miss or the Queen of the Orient in the Manila Carnival in 1908. And after that, our passion with beauty queens were further solidified when we started winning international passions. The very first Miss International is Gemma Cruz and she won in 1964. And of course, everybody knows that Gloria Diaz conquered the universe in 1969. Aside from women, Filipino men admire three queens. Did you know that the very first Miss Universe, Miss Finland, Army Kusala, she married a Filipino businessman named Virgilio Milagro. The very first Miss International, Stella Marquez of Colombia, also married a Filipino businessman, Jorge Araneta. And recently, most people know Madame Stella Marquez Araneta as the national director of the Bilibini Filipinas Charities. Aside from our rich pageant history, we also have to consider that we are currently living in the golden decade of Philippine pageantry. Since 2010, we have consistently placed in the top 10 of the Miss Universe fashion. In the last six years, we already won two Miss International crowns, our first Miss World crown, and two Miss Universe crowns. So aside from this history and the hype about beauty pageants, why should we talk about it? Is there anything beyond the evening gowns, the swimsuits, and beautiful women? Let's try to think of it in a more simpler way. Beauty pageants are basically public job interviews. Every candidate is an applicant, and they're all vying for one role, to be the beauty queen, or in corporate speak, that is a brand ambassador or a spokesperson. And just like a regular job application, every company or organization, they all have their own personalities, they have their own ideas of what a perfect beauty queen is, so we really cannot compare each queen from each other. For example, the Miss World pageant is based in the UK. The Miss Universe pageant is based in the US. The Miss International pageant is based in Japan. So that's why when you watch these pageants, they all have their own music. But aside from being public job interviews, what can millennials and Gen Z's learn from beauty pageants? As a corporate trainer and somebody who enjoys beauty pageants, I actually watch and re-watch a lot of videos every day. I actually take beauty pageants as my coffee. It boosts my energy. I became, I always become more creative after watching beauty pageants. 
and because of years and years of watching critically and analyzing how our fees perform, I created and designed a, a secret weapon that helps me cope with our highly disruptive and competitive society. And I call it the true green mindset. And to further understand what the true green mindset is, I have enlisted five green essential skills that can help us have that true green mindset. First of all, it's all about self-awareness. Before making any major life decisions, we must first know ourselves. We have to know ourselves truly and deeply. I'm just wondering, you already know your biggest why. Why are you doing the things that you are doing? Why are you waking up every morning? Why do you keep going to work? What is your biggest why? Only when we already know and identify our biggest why and understand what our core values are, then we can have our full attention in going after our dreams. Just like Rita Strzok in 2010, she wanted to be the Miss Philippines in Miss Universe, but she was initially disqualified because of her birth certificate. People are questioning her nationality, but Venus knows for a fact that she is completely Filipina, that she fought for the right to wear that Philippine sash in the Miss Universe pageant. And because of that, she broke the year-long, a uh, nine-year-long drought of the Philippines in the Miss Universe pageant, and eventually starting this golden decade of Philippine pageant. Second is all about critical thinking. I think that the best person that I can mention to you guys about critical thinking is Pia Wurzbach. Because Pia, when she joined Miss Universe in 2015, she had to navigate through a lot of controversial and political situations. Her first question in Miss Universe 2015 was her opinion about the United States building a military base in the Philippines. Her answer became very controversial, but I think she gave the best possible answer at that moment. She was very diplomatic. She understood the context. Can you just imagine? You are a part of Miss Universe, again, based in the US. She was in Las Vegas, Nevada, and the entire uh, panel of judges are all Americans. So definitely, Pia had to make a decision. She highlighted the strong relationship between the Philippines and the U.S. and she said that there's, she sees nothing wrong in that. She kept in mind that her goal is to bring the Miss Universe round after 42 long years back in the Philippines. Again, it's a beauty pageant, she only had 30 seconds, and it's not the imagination. So I think that is thinking critically. Next, communication skills. As a queen, you will be a brand ambassador, a spokesperson, so eloquence is expected. But aside from eloquence, I'd like you to focus on the nonverbal communication or your body language. When Kylie Versosa went to Japan in 2016 for the Miss International Pageant, she did her research and she had full understanding of the culture of the Japanese people. So when she joined the pageant, she was very graceful, yet powerful, subtle, yet firm. And because of that, she took home our sixth Miss International crown. I cannot think of anybody else as a poster child or poster queen for creative processing than Catriona Gray. Catriona saw beauty pageants not just for the entertainment value, she saw pageants as a platform with a strong, influence where you can actually talk about her advocacy and create change. She saw the national costume not just enough as another costume, but an opportunity to showcase our rich culture to the world, which eventually led to a lot of Filipinos appreciating what we have here in the Philippines. And also I think a good example of creative processing is what they're doing now. Imagine we are in the University of the Philippines, and here I am talking about beauty passion and what we can learn from it. 
So I think that is an example of creative processing. And of course, this has got to be the most critical but neglected factor of the model, mental toughness. Because even if we've already mastered the first four quintessential skills, if we are not mentally tough, the crown or success wouldn't be close to us. Because at the end of the day, we still have to persevere. And I think the best person to describe mental toughness would have to be Angela Ponce or Miss Payne in Miss Universe 2018. If you don't know who she is, you might be living under a rock because Angela is the first trans woman candidate in the Miss Universe pageant. And whether you agree or not with her decision to join, we cannot deny the fact that she is a courageous woman. Whether you are inspired or you started asking questions, nothing would be nothing would be happening. Or we wouldn't even be talking about this if Angela wasn't really tough. Can you just imagine somebody taking that effort to find their best self, winning their national pageant, stepping to an international stage? Definitely, it came with a lot of harsh criticisms and negativity. But Angela, she actually pushed forward. I created the true queen mindset as a coping mechanism for myself. Because I, I, well, we live in a very tough world. Traffic, taxes, a lot of issues in politics and so on and so forth. I have to have my own compass. So whenever I make a huge life decision, I always go back to the true queen mindset as a guy. Because the true queen will always think that there is always a win-win situation in every problem. A true queen is more critical, not just because it's not just only with our beauty pageants, but with how he or she votes. Because at the end of the day, a true queen knows what matters most. So when I created my page, The Millennial Phrenologist, it's actually a fairly new page. My goal is to maximize the reach of social media and the power of beauty pageants to spread awareness and also to encourage people that we have to find our best self. We can use beauty pageants to inspire ourselves, to take what we admire from those queens and apply it to what we are doing every, every day. Because at the end of the day, Personal growth or personal development is not only for actors, models, or politicians. Personal development is something that can be our edge whenever we are applying for work, looking for a promotion, or simply meeting new people. I want everybody to know that you don't really have to have a crown to be a queen because we are the crown. We have the power. We can actually decide if we just want to be another candidate or if we want to be a queen in our own story. Because I think that a queen is just a title, but a true queen is a mindset. And I believe that a true queen mindset is the essence of every queen. Thank you.